The flying of the tie for you is an art flick done variant. It's a, a pretty old school dry fly designed by Art Flick. He's from Never Sink, New York. And uh, it's a real good attractor dry fly. It's also pretty imitative too. It imitates a, a large mayfly spinner. Uh, a lot of them are rusty in color. And this Dunn variant does a really good job at imitating a big spinner. Um, and it's really good uh, to fish in fast water. Um, I, th I think you'll like it. Um, the first thing we're going to do is start out with a, just a standard dry fly hook. You know, you can tie these anywhere from 12 to maybe 16. I think Art liked the size 14 hook the best. We're going to tie this on a size 12. Alright, first thing we're going to do is just attach the thread, not quite in the middle, maybe about two-thirds of the way. Um, towards the eye and then wind back to immediately above the barb. Trim the little tag in. All right, now the next thing we're going to do is it's important to have real good stiff uh, dry fly hackle, not only for, for this fly, but pretty much for all of them. And uh, the, the first feather we're going to yank off here is one of these little side feathers um, for the tail. We're just going to pluck off one of those feathers. And this fly, you want to have at least a shank length for the tail, if not maybe a little bit longer. This one's about a shank length and it'll probably work. And what I'm going to do is just strip off the soft fibers kind of at the base to get to these nice stiff hackles. And then what I'm going to do is to maybe strip off, you know, maybe about a quarter inch worth of fibers and then I'm going to gather them up To make a nice even little tail like that. What I'm going to do is just make a quick measurement. I want to make sure that the tail is as long as the shank of the hook. On this fly it's okay that it's a little bit longer. And then wind that on. And I'm also given kind of the shank of the hook, kind of a nice even base. We're going to, the next step is we're going to do a quill body on here and if you have a great big peaks and valleys on that body you're going to see it when you do that quill body. So take the time to run your thread back and forth just to ensure that you have a nice even underbody. Now one more little trick is I'm going to take one wrap of thread behind the tail and what that's going to do is stand it up on an angle. You'll see when we're done this fly, it actually sits upright on an angle like that and it'll sit better if you prop up that tail. All right, the next thing I'm going to use is a kind of a reddish brown hackle. And I'm going to pluck one of these feathers from the back um, that has a nice reddish brown stem. And what I'm going to do is just strip off all the fibers just so you have a bare stem. And you don't want to go too far into the tip otherwise the, the, the stem gets rather fragile. So you know, leave yourself a good inch of, of material that you're not going to use there and, and just cut it off. And the next thing we're going to do is tie this stem in right there along the shank of the hook and then just wind your thread one wrap in front of the other all the way up to that two-thirds mark on the shank of the hook. All right, what you want to do here is just wrap this quill one wrap right in front of the other. It also helps to soak these maybe in, into some warm water to make the stem more pliable if you're having problems with them, uh, with them breaking. And so I'm just going to wrap this one wrap right in front of the other. And 
just right about to there is good. You don't need a very long body and it's pretty important that you stay in this uh, it, within these proportions of maybe just under two-thirds body and then one-third hackle which is the next step. All right, the next thing I do is take my done neck again and I'm going to pull off two, maybe even three feathers. And the sizing is a little bit different on this particular fly because you want the hackle to be uh, three, maybe even four times what you would normally use on, on a, uh, si say, a size 12 dry, dry fly. So, and the places where you're going to find the best feathers on the neck to do this fly with, they're kind of on the sides here. They've got the, the, the widest fibers. So what I'm going to do is just flip my hook upside down and measure a couple feathers here and make sure that those fibers are long enough. Try these guys here. Yeah, that's much better. That's almost three times the shank length. Those two will work just fine. One of the cool things about this fly with this oversized tackle is when you fish it, being that it has this giant hackle on there, it really, it, it'll almost float down to the surface of the water. And if you do that, if you drop it right on top of a fish that's looking up and they see that this great big dry fly that looks like a big spinner, a lot of times you'll, you'll end up with a pretty explosive strike. So I've got my two feathers here, just uh, preparing by number one, getting, cutting all the fuzz out to get to the nice stiff dry fly hackle and then stripping off maybe about, oh, in this case, maybe an eighth of an inch of bare stem, and that's what I'm going to tie on to. I'm just going to give those guys a nice sturdy coat of thread and bring my thread right up to just shy of the eye of the hook. And if you prefer to use hackle pliers, this would be a, a good place for them. I usually just use my fingers. And what I'm going to do when I wrap this hackle is I'm not going to stack this first hackle one wrap in front of the other. I'm going to leave a, just a little space in between each wrap. And then when I wrap the second hackle, I'm going to drop that second hackle right into those spots. So I can't go any further there, so I'm going to go ahead and tie that first one off. A couple tight wraps of thread. And take that second hackle, and if you kind of weave it in between, just kind of move it back and forth as you wrap it, it'll kind of find its place in there. And this is a fly that if you put plenty of hackle on there, it'll really really support the weight of the fly and really float in some amazingly fast water. And that's probably good right there. Tie that feather off. Now before I wind any more thread on there, I'm going to go ahead and cut that first hackle off and any other fibers that I caught with my thread and then go right from there to whip finishing. You get a coat of head cement on here and you'll be done. Another little trick when you're whip finishing, any fly with hackle or anything up towards the eye of the hook, if you pull it all back, you don't have to worry about catching it. And we're done. You can kind of pull that hackle back into place. And if you notice, we've got a really big bushy dry fly that's light as a feather. Um, you can twitch this guy and skate it around. Um, like I said, it's, it's one of my favorite fast water dry flies. Uh, tie a couple up and uh, give it a shot. I think you'll like it.